one evening in October of 1874, an Anglican minister of a small town in the Lake District was to have a revelation of Christ to my soul. So extraordinary, so glorious, so precious that from that day it illuminated my life. I found he was all I wanted. Whenever I have trusted him with a full and entire trust, I have found him all I needed. It was the turning point for that Victorian gentleman of an inward spiritual struggle. The influx of the spirit which flooded his soul flows still into Keswick over a hundred years later. Thousands of Christians from all walks of life come here each year for two weeks in the summer to a unique convention. They come in families or individually or in church groups to fill the guest houses and swell the small town's population. Bibles in hand, they mingle with the tourists and townspeople on their way to study the Christian faith in peaceful surroundings. The new convention centre in Skiddaw Street, completed in 1987, stands impressively on one of the sites which housed the huge tent originally erected for meetings in the early years. Today a tent is still used with room for nearly 5,000 people, but now it adjoins a permanent building, open all the year round. The words over the entrance still proclaim the same message preached from the first year of the convention. A great need that I can see in the country at the moment is the need to train leaders to feed the churches, these churches that are growing. And I also see the need to, to train leaders interdenominationally, all together, so that we could deepen their relationship, the relationship between the leaders of churches that are often small, scattered and isolated in the different areas. The result is a Catholicism that... Each day, the congregation hear from people who have a personal and practical experience of God working in their lives and directing them through the scriptures. But yet, scripture tells me, and experience has taught me, that when we place our bodies as a living sacrifice on the altar of God, and when we allow our minds to be renewed and to be thinking God's thoughts and God's way, that we prove that God's will is good and acceptable, pleasing and perfect. We enjoy doing God's will, whatever the hardships. And so off I went to Kenya as a missionary of the African Inland Mission, to Turkana, which is reputed to be one of the hottest places south of the Sahara among the people who were called primitive. And I loved it. And I remember those early days going around places where the name of Jesus had never been mentioned once. People who had an awareness of God but no idea that he had a son who would come to save them. Yeah. And we worked hard. People were starving very, very often. A voice carries from the tent, just as it did in the first Keswick Convention, with the same message, which has not changed over the years. For here, a short step away, it all started in the vicarage garden of St. John's Parish Church. The vicar had arranged a series of meetings over three days in June 1875, and invited speakers to talk on the theme of practical scriptural holiness. A large tent, seating 600, was put up in the field behind the vicarage garden. A new teaching flowered in the 1870s which promoted a spiritual experience of God. Much evangelistic work in Britain and later a religious revival in America had prepared the ground. Canon Harford Battersby had been vicar of St. John's for 24 years when he became troubled by the new teaching. 
At a conference in Oxford for the promotion of scriptural holiness, he was fired with a new spiritual life, inspiring him to share his discovery in his hometown of Keswick. He little realized then that he and his friend and co-organizer, Robert Wilson, had become founders of a convention which was to become a permanent fixture and for which they are remembered today. determining which wisdom we will listen to, what will be the operative dynamic in our lives. He showed us that among many other things, when we begin to operate on the basis of the heavenly wisdom, there will be a real sense of peace in our lives. And where better to experience peace than in the beauty of the Cumbrian landscape? For conventioners who prefer to spend the whole time under canvas and enjoy some space, there are various camps run by mission societies set up in the fields outside town. Come rain or fine, the day always starts with an early morning prayer meeting to which the whole family is encouraged to come. thunder, we have felt the wind and the gales, we have heard the rain beaming down in our <coughs> tents and our caravans, and Lord, it has made us just reflect on the, the immensity of creation itself, and just how our total dependence is on you. And Lord, we would ask once again, as the week draws to an end, that we will go home rejoicing in a new awareness of your might. We ask it in your name. Amen. I had the gale force wind late on Sunday night and I was praying vigorously for all the people in their camps, but I never ever thought it would blow this tent down. We arrived on Monday morning to find it in a state of disarray. We had to rearrange the programme for two days, but it's a miracle it's up at all. I believe in, in, in Keswick they'll find a fellowship that's marvellous because it's across denominations and across nations. I believe they'll find a teaching that is of a high quality and I believe that they will be challenged through consecutive teaching to a better way of living. We're not here for kicks, we're here to be equipped to go out to live better lives and I believe they'll find that through Keswick.
we still major on holiness, practical holiness, biblical holiness. It's based on the exposition of the scriptures, and, and of course these don't change, but obviously uh, the way we present it, the music and so on, that has changed and must do. It's knowing where to change and where not to change. We're delighted to have lots of older people who come, but I think we need to be sure we get more young people, and that means while keeping the same message which young people need and want, uh, we need perhaps to make the the music and the peripheral program a little more attractive to young people. These new custom-made premises are very wonderful and of course we've got all the facilities we could wish for on the ground floor but upstairs we have accommodation for up to 41 people which during the convention week is used by stewards and uh, some of the PA team and out of the convention season it's available as a conference center for any youth groups or church youth groups, educational groups and so on. The second week is the holiday convention for all the family. While the morning Bible reading is underway in the main tent, the rooms in the centre are full to bursting. The Scripture Union Holiday Club runs programmes and activities here for children of all ages. Parents and young ones have a rest from each other, knowing that each is being well looked after. Upstairs, there is also a creche for toddlers, staffed by helpers where mum or dad can keep an eye on the babies while listening to the meetings which are relayed from the main tent. She was afraid of the, ki of the cruel king. The king's name was Pharaoh. The Christian resource exhibition downstairs provides information about all kinds of Christian service and advice is always on hand. Your children, he's given you a desire in terms of gifts and my encouragement for you would be that you're able to, to stay with that and realize that if he's given you these desires, if he's given you that, that willingness to be available, then he will leave. It might be a long period of time, but he will clearly leave you. And I, and I will check it. 27. The 5,000 or so visitors usually pass at some stage through the busy office, run by a friendly team of staff most of whom return each year to assist in the smooth running of the convention. I'm usually sitting in this office where you see me now. Uh, I'm usually here at quarter to seven in the morning, and I don't usually get away until quarter past to half past ten at night, and I'm on duty all that time. And that's every day, Sundays included, because there's masses to do. Mission is a, a, a very strong emphasis of Keswick, but the, uh, the, the main message of Keswick is practical scriptural holiness and how to live a, a, a life as a true Christian and to reap the benefits which are available to the Christian through the person and work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Uh, that inevitably involves the matter of missions. We're unique, of course, insofar that I think we're the only event of this nature, probably in the world, where there's no advance registration or registration fee. And sometimes people ask why that is, uh, and um, I have to point out that, of course, events that take place in some of the holiday camps around the country are in a confined, contained area, whereas here we would have to virtually throw a stockade around the town of Keswick mm -hmm. if we were going to charge admission and uh, make it a registration fee. So it's completely free, and people come, and the poor secretary never knows if there's going to be one person coming or 10,000, and we only have a seat that seats 5,000. We have always uh, encouraged missionaries to come to Keswick. We, in fact, uh, invite as our guests any missionaries on furlough who are back in this country. Uh, we also have a missionary reception on the Wednesday of the first week, and we have a missionary meeting both weeks. The ministry of Keswick has inspired those answering God's call for the first time, and also those returning from many years of missionary service. I came to the Keswick Convention just prior to leaving for Africa, and I remember being greatly challenged uh, through the whole ministry of Keswick and uh, we have on the mission field always listened to Keswick tapes and the Keswick message is well known to us. It's, it's lovely to be together with so many Christians and that is encouraging. Coming from Ethiopia, the freedom itself just to sing and to hear the word of God preached in such freedom as well as all the lessons you can get from it. Obviously now I look forward to go back home. And although we don't have all this freedom, you know, we can start to a certain extent that we can start teaching people and just having part of 
broadcasting guys work with people. You know, from every congregation, the people of the, from different denominations gather together. As it says in one in Jesus, uh, I loved it very much. It seems to me as I think about the way that we conceive missionary work, that we've got two problems that we often get confused with. And I want to separate them for you. The first problem is this that about half the world's population, somewhere between two and three thousand million people, have never heard the gospel and don't live anywhere near anybody who's going to tell them the gospel if they wake up to the idea that they can do it. That's problem number one. Problem number two is that we live in a country... Keswick is not only an event with a great past, which is often emphasised, but it's also an event with a great future as well. It's a great opportunity for, for meeting with Christians of other traditions and backgrounds. Um, the banner, all one in Christ Jesus, is more than just a banner. It really is true, and we've seen it this week with the, the tent blowing down and people who are both stewards and people who are, who are guests here mucking in together and, and showing practical Christianity. The second thing is it's, it's a place where God's word is at the center. Somebody described it to me last week as a, a place where if you want to have a feast of Bible teaching, this is where you need to be. And I think that's true. It's a place where the word of God right from the beginning of the day through to the end of the day is taught and explained. And so for a Christian who's really wanting to grow in the Christian life, it's, it's something to look forward to. I think Keswick has undergone some enormous changes in the last few years. And although perhaps a few years ago it may have been true to say that it was losing its appeal and its cutting edge amongst the young, I found being here this year that the tide has turned. There's no doubt about that. And looking at the fact that we have something like four to five hundred young people, 15 through to 30, every night meeting together. Uh, we run out of seats in the cinema where, where we're holding the meetings. There's enthusiasm, they're enjoying the, the worship times, they're enjoying interviews with different people, and most of all, you can hear a pin drop when the Word of God is being preached and explained. confused because I thought Israel was a country, not a person. Well, Jacob was known also as Israel, and he had 12 sons. I've got four, and I feel as if I'm 60 years of age, so I don't know how he felt with 12. But he had 12 lads. And those 12 lads became what we know as the patriarchs, the fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel. So the nation of Israel got their name from Jacob. Get it? And if you trace back through his family line, his dad and his granddad, his granddad was Abraham. Overlooked by the ancient hills, the younger generation of Keswick conventioners enjoy the fun laid on by Scripture Union and helpers in the park. It is a chance for families to relax together in an atmosphere of fellowship. Friendships struck up here might well be continued during the year or at future conventions. Want a mouth? No? Want a bit of mouth? Okay. Up! Get the No walk! Oh, wonderful! I'm all right. I'm doing good. I'm all right. Let's go with this round. I have talked to many ministers, many lay leaders in churches since I've been here. 
And the word that comes through all the time is thank you, encouragement, I feel better. Uh, th this, this is the response that, that I'm getting. I'm very encouraged by what I see as the development of young leadership in the country. I am very much encouraged by the serious uh, approach to spiritual things that I see on the part of those who, who are believers. And I'm, I'm very excited uh, to see that there are, there are people here who are taking initiatives. There's a creativity and a virility of, about the church. But when I look at the English society, for instance, recently in the open air meeting at Keswick, I really was quite surprised uh, to see what almost seemed to be uh, a belligerence, uh, a hard resistance to what was going on. Uh, I would think that there are the good, good reasons for believing that there's going to be great blessing, but it's going to be a monumental task. Now, in the most amazingly remarkable way, Jesus Christ could have come to this world, told us what God was like, preached some great sermons, done some nice healings, given us a way to live and shoved off back to heaven and we would never have been able to get there ourselves but in all his love and his mercy he said there is nobody is ever going to get to God without me paying for what they've done wrong the Lord Jesus waits for you to trust him and I'm going to ask you to do just two simple things I'm going to ask you to pray with me before you go. And then I'm going to ask you just to let me know so I can give you something to help you so you don't wake up tomorrow morning and think, now what am I going to do? Just where you are, whether you're standing or sitting, whether you're leaning against a shop doorway or standing here in the middle, wherever you are, will you now make this your own prayer? When you look at something like Keswick, it caters for a particular group of Christians from the United Kingdom, but also it has a particular emphasis. The historic message of Keswick has been a message of holiness and the Lordship of Christ and the need for a daily walk with God. Now, those are things that are, are very valid today. In fact, we can almost argue they're more valid today than they ever have been. A lot of people come to the convention knowing what they're coming to, and uh, yet are not ready for what they find when they get here. And uh, time and time again, we, feel, we find people whose total lives have changed as a result of being at Keswick, and they go back to their home churches with a new vision of what God would have to do in their church. Will lead us all, rather than Rock the of will lead us all ages the cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure cleanse me from its guilt and power nothing in my hand i bring simply to thy cross i cling naked come to thee for dress helpless look to thee for grace foul i to the fountain fly wash me savior or i die